We've all heard the term carbon footprint um, is a very widely used term, but what does it actually mean? Um, let's take a look at how you define carbon footprint, how you work out a carbon footprint, and what the problems are associated um, with carbon footprints when you speak about them. If you've got a business with over 50 staff or you know, our sweet spot over 250 staff, then this is certainly for you. Okay, so the whistle stop tour of carbon footprint. Let's, let's get started. What is carbon footprint? What is a carbon footprint? Well, you've got a company, right? Let's just draw it as this, this square box here. That's your company. Your company does things. It either it buys things and sells things. It may be designs things. That's my view of a computer. Don't laugh. Um, that's the computer, but it does things. And as it does stuff, it emits carbon dioxide. For example, you might burn some fuel um, in company cars, carbon dioxide. You might heat the place, so you've got a boiler somewhere, carbon dioxide. Virtually all companies I know use some form of electricity. You know, that's got to be generated, carbon dioxide. So you've got carbon dioxide and other pollutants going into the atmosphere. The amount of pollutants that go into the atmosphere is defined as the carbon footprint. Okay, now let's have a look at the unit of measurement. What's it measured in? Well, I'll just get rid of all that. You know, we said that the company emits various forms of pollutants. The biggest one obviously is carbon dioxide. You know, I buy that. So that's CO2. But you have got others up here. You've got, um, for example, methane uh, and a lot of agriculture generates methane. You've got, I'm not going to write it up, but you've got fluorocarbons that, you've, that also get um, emitted. And they're used in things like refrigerants. So if you've got an aircon system, then the refrigerant that they pump around is a fluorocarbon. They go into the atmosphere. Let's put them FC there. And you've also got uh, nitrous oxide. And uh, chemists amongst you might be NO2 but uh, you've got nitrous oxide. You've got others as well, they're the big ones. And, and how do you then sort of equate one to the other? Well, there's a metric they use to convert methane to equivalent CO2. So you've got CO2, but it's not just CO2. They say, for example, one tonne of methane is worth maybe X tonnes of CO2, and one tonne of fluorocarbon is worth X tonnes of CO2. Fluorocarbons, by the way, that number is often in the thousands. So one tonne of fluorocarbons is worth you know, a couple of thousand tonnes of CO2. So what they do is they all relate it back to this magic one here, CO2, and say, well, how much CO2 would that be equivalent to with these other pollutants? And so they put CO2E, that stands for um, equivalent. So it's the equivalent emissions of CO2. And because the numbers are quite large, they're in tons, sometimes kilograms, but generally most companies are in tons. So tons of CO2E, that's metric tons, by the way, thousand kilograms. So that's the unit of measure, TCO2E, tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. And they take all those up, wrap it into CO2. That's what the carbon footprint is. Okay, so you're gonna need a lot of data. Sorry about that, you just are, um, it's, it's, it's what's required. And we're going to get data on all of the different carbon emitters that we spoke about previously. So here's electricity, gas, here's your fuel card and your staff mileage. Commuting's lurking over here, deliveries both into your company and deliveries out to clients, what waste you generate, etc. And you're going to need that kind of calculation for all of the 15 scope 3 categories. It's quite a lot, you know, um, and some of them are harder than others, so uh, we'll see. And what you do is you take your total electricity use for a 12-month period and you multiply it by a factor, which is a government factor, for a lek. And that says uh, for every kilowatt hour of electricity from this source, you generate this much CO2, okay? That will give you your carbon emissions for electricity. Same for gas, you multiply it by the factor for gas, again from referring the factor, correct factor for your fuel type. I know gas, but gas is a general terms, lots of different types of gas. 
Fuel card, again, how much did you use on diesel? So, so there's a factor for diesel. And for petrol, there's a factor for petrol. Staff mileage, there's a factor for staff mileage, etc. On you go. And all of these here, including these, this will have a factor for, for example, a, a large lorry uh, per ton per mile or kilometers if you're uh, kind of that way inclined and the same with all of these down here so you look at your total use in all of these categories here you find the correct factor here be careful they change at least every year sometimes they're minor changes sometimes they're not um, and you multiply all of the factors out by all of the usage categories out by uh, scope one, scope two, and scope three, add it up, and that's your um, carbon footprint. That's how much carbon you emitted in that 12 months. So is the process easy? These, very easy. These, hard. Do I recommend you get some software? So we produce Plato, which, which does all this for you, does that, that kind of calc, and it's got all the factors stored in. It makes life easier, but it's up to you. You can do it on Excel. Good luck. I hope it goes really well, but uh, that's how you do it. Usage times your factor, add them up, that's your footprint. And again, you're going to have to do it again in a year's time. It's normally an annual figure that you publish. Okay, that's how you measure it. So let's uh, imagine in your company you're reading documents. You might choose to read it by candle. <laughs> of course, you never would do. You'd use electric lights. But let, for the purposes of this example, let's have a look. So you've got the candle, you're reading the document by candlelight. Um, do you remember the scope one, two, and three? Very obviously, scope one, we're burning the fuel, the CO2 is going straight up into the atmosphere. Nice and easy, simple, simple. So scope one, simple, okay? Scope two is also simple, electricity. You just look it up in a table. X kilowatt hours generates Y, kilograms of CO2, um, CO2E, uh, and you can just do a simple modification. The problem is with scope three. So let's just imagine that we run out of candles and I asked Farah, um, you know, as, uh, one of my colleagues, to go and get some candles from me from uh, home base, I think. And she comes up with these. What about that? Now, I've asked Farah as a manager here to go and do something for me. So it's a business use. And you might say, for example, right, let's look at the fuel used in her car. Okay, and this is not fast, just around the corner. So say it's two miles. So you've got a fuel use there. Okay, nice and easy. <laughs> but you've got more than that. So Farah has to, to do that, have a car in the first place. And let's say a car... Let's say these modern cars have got a lifespan of, say, 150,000 miles. Then you've got the actual car itself, because you can't do it without that. That will be 2 out of 150,000 miles multiplied by the CO2e of the car. Th then she gets to home base. And home base, which is, if you're watching from abroad, is, is a UK sort of DIY supplier. Home base sell the candles, but home base have to exist. So home base, let's just imagine that home base turn over, call it a billion pounds, shall we? You know, one billion pounds. Um, and let's say the candles were 10 pounds. Then we have to account for 10 one billionths by home bases CO2 equivalent. Because you, know, you have to buy them somewhere and home pays have to do all their thing. They're busy generating CO2 over there. So it's only fair that we take our portion of it. Then let's look at the candles themselves. Here they are, aren't they wonderful? These have to be produced. So you've got the production of the candles, which would be X kilograms CO2 Okay, and then look at this. These are quite well packaged. I quite like this actually, you know, so, so good on you lads at, at home base. But this is the wrapper. So the wrapper has to be produced. It will be tiny, but if you're selling several million of them a year, it adds up, which would be X kilograms CO2E. Now whoever does the wrapper 
has to print it. Well, where do they get the ink from? Well, probably from an ink supplier. Well, where does the ink supplier get it from? Well, they're busy generating CO2 here. So you've got the ink on the wrapper. And you can see how this is just flowing down into a chain. You know, where do they get the ink? Well, they manage that, manufacture that from chemicals that they extract and they ship, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a big web of stuff. And one of the biggest problems you've got with you know, your, your footprint is scope three. Everything else is really quite easy, but scope three is the difficult one. How do you define where you draw the line? Because you have to draw the line somewhere. Otherwise, we'll be here for a month or Sundays. So you have to draw the line. Where do you draw the line? So that's the scoping exercise. That's, that's difficult. But you know, we use a system called Anistic Net Zero, and that gives you guidelines about where to draw that line. Um, and if you want to know more about Anistic Net Zero, just check out one of the links below. It, it's, it's a good system. It works, and it answers questions like this. Second problem is, how do you quantify it? So say you wanted to do this. Say you want to say, OK. How much ink is used? Well, let's face it, it's a couple of milligrams, isn't it? It's not going to be huge. So what do you do? You phone up the candle manufacturer who calls up the wrapper manufacturer who calls up the ink supplier. Doesn't happen, doesn't happen, you know. Um, so the measurement of these things is difficult. I think it will get better over time as more people have sort of published figures on their carbon use. But right now, getting hold of the data is difficult. Processing the data is difficult. And coming from meaningful comparisons is difficult because you know, different people do it in different ways. So the problems with carbon footprint, broadly all around scope three, you know, what's the standard? Do you use an Enistic Net Zero or ENZ or do you use something else? And what does that give you at the end of the day? It's difficult to work out. Um, and uh, if you're doing it with a calculator, you know, good luck, it's, you're almost, it's, it's a losing task. You will need some sort of software package to help you sort of push that through. Otherwise, you don't stand a chance of working that out. So there you go. In a nutshell, to wrap up, carbon footprint. It, what is it? It's how much T, how much tons of CO2 or the equivalent you emit in a 12-month period. How do you measure it? Break it down into scope one, scope two, scope three. Are there any problems? Hell yeah, <laughs> there's many problems. L nearly all of them in scope three measurement. And uh, it's, it's complex, it's fuzzy, it's incomplete data, all those fun and games. So that's scope three measurement. So that's carbon footprint. Hope that was useful. And if you want a problem for advanced readers, uh, as my sort of math teacher used to say, you know, stay tuned and I'll give you a problem um, that you can think about if you're that way inclined. And if you're not, don't worry. It's not a problem, you can, you can stop watching here. Okay, hope that was useful. Okay, so if you're still watching, um, I'm gonna give you an example of one of the advanced problems that we have to kind of think about and, and work our way through with prot protocols like ENZ and, and stuff like that. R let's take this example here of my wonderful candles and reaching across the wrapper that they came in. Let's draw an extra line on here and I'll leave it up to you to see how you would answer this. Let's just imagine that in this production chain, the ink that, use, that is used by the printer in the ink um, manufacturer, they actually source some of their supply chain. So some of the things they use, they buy from home base. So maybe <laughs> the wrapper ink printing manufacturing people Go and buy some jugs, some bowls, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, from home base. Then you can see a problem here. You know, you see an immediate problem because to work out their footprint, you have to work out their footprint. But to work out their footprint, you're already working out their footprint. It's um, all fun and games. So that's a problem. I'm not going to tell you how to answer it. If you're interested um, in working out or proposing a solution, ping me an email. Be glad to see what you've got, or put a comment below. Probably comment below would be better than an email, but. Uh, there you go, all fun and games, and um, good luck with that. Um, it's an interesting answer.